Hello everyone, this is Babita, working as assistant professor in the department of ECE, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering. Today I am going to discuss about analysis of common base, common emitter as well as common collector configurations using hybrid model. So while coming to the contents, here I am going to discuss about what is mean by amplifier circuit and as well as what is mean by the analysis of common emitter, common base, common collector configurations using hybrid model. So before going to the analysis of all the amplifiers, first of all we have to know what is mean by amplifier. So in general terms we can say amplifier is a circuit which is used to amplify the given signal. It is nothing but when we apply the weak signal to the input of the amplifier circuit across the output we will get the amplified version of that weak AC signal. So in generally we can say amplifier is nothing but the a device that responds to a small applied input signal that may be a voltage signal or current signal or power signal and it gives a larger output signal and it contains essential waveform features of the applied input signal. So this is the uh, basic definition for the amplifier circuit. So this amplification we can able to achieve by any one configuration of the transistor here. So in the case of transistor we are having three configurations common base configuration, common emitter configuration and common collector configuration. So in all the three configurations we can use our transistor as an amplifier. So to operate the transistor in the amplification mode we have to provide the biasing to operate the transistor in the active region. It is nothing but always the input junction should be forward biased as well as output junction should be reverse biased in order to operate the transistor in the active region. So once we operate the transistor in the active region then we can able to get the amplified version of the output for the given input across the amplifier and along with this active region of operation we have to choose the proper operating point of the amplifier to get faithful amplification. So how we can achieve the proper operating point means here operating point is nothing but the VCE voltage as well as collector current that is nothing but output voltage and current. So here if we observe the VCE voltage almost we will get it as VCC that is supply voltage that supply voltage is fixed. So the only varying parameter is IC. The collector current will vary here. So in order to maintain the stable operating point, we have to maintain the stable collector current. But here collector current is varying due to the temperature as well as beta. So if we modify that variations of the collector current due to beta and temperature, we can able to achieve the stable operating point once we achieve the stable operating point in the active region, we can able to get the uh, faithful amplification across the amplifier. So this is the basic function of the amplifier. So while coming to the hybrid model, here what is mean by hybrid model? First of all, we have to know here. Hybrid means mixed signal here. Mixed signal is nothing but that is the combination of voltage signal as well as current signal here. Hybrid is nothing but mixing of voltage and current parameters. So in the case of transistor we are having two junctions so we can utilize our transistor in the form of two port network. So input junction or input side we can take it as the port 1 of the two port network and output port or output junction we can take it as the Port to here. Okay, we are replacing the transistor with the two port network here. So the port one consists of the voltage, input voltage, 
as well as input current and similarly port 2 also consists of output voltage as well as output current so these input parameters as well as output parameters are the transistor parameters that is nothing but input voltage and current as well as output voltage and current in the case of transistor so if you take the total current and voltage levels in the case of transistor in two port network model we will get that is the combination of both the ac value as well as dc value okay both the voltage and current parameters we will get in terms of ac as well as dc values okay but for the hybrid model or for the small signal analysis we will take all the voltage and current parameters in ac form not in dc form so the four parameters v1 i1 and v2 i2 are there in transistor two port network so among these four parameters v1 and i2 are the dependent quantities v2 and i1 are independent quantities so why we are choosing only these particular parameters or dependent independent parameters so if you take this particular combination v1 i2 are dependent as well as v2 i1 are independent quantities so that we can able to get the hybrid parameters suppose if you take the different combinations that is v1 i1 and v2 i2 it may give the z parameters that is impedance parameters and if you take other combination v2 i2 and as well as v1 i1 in that case if we take we will get it as admittance parameters okay so different combinations of the parameters will give the different parameters here so to get the hybrid parameters or h parameters we have to take the input voltage as well as output current or the dependent parameters and output voltage and input current are the independent quantities and uh, to analyze this two port network and to derive the hybrid model of this two port network i am writing or i am considering the dependent quantities are the functions of independent quantities here so in this case v1 and i2 are the dependent quantities that two dependent quantities i am writing in the form of or function of two independent quantities those are i1 and v2 so that's why i have written here it as v1 equal to f1 of i1 comma v2 and also i2 equal to f2 of i1 comma v2 so these two are i am taking it as my two functional equations so from these two functional equations i can able to derive the hybrid parameters here so to get that hybrid parameters i am differentiating these two equations with respect to their independent quantities that is nothing but from equation 1 from equation 1 i am writing d v1 is equal to it is the function of we observe here d1 is a function of i1 comma v2 that is nothing but d i1 by d v1 into d v1 plus one more function here it is v2 that is nothing but d v2 by d v1 into d v1 i am taking it as my third equation it is and again from the second equation from the second equation i am writing here it as second equation is i2 equal to function of i1 comma v2 so d i2 is equal to d i1 by d i2 d i1 by d i2 into d i2 plus d v2 by d i2 into d i2 
So if we getting cancel these differential terms means again these three and four equations are equivalent to our one and two equations here. Okay. So in this case, I am replacing this first di1 by dv1 with my first h parameter that is h11 and dv2 by dv1 I am taking it as my second h parameter that is h12 and next this one I am taking here it as h21 and this one I am taking here it as h Okay. So here all the currents as well as voltages I am taking here it as AC values. Okay, all the voltage and currents I am taking here it as AC values. So here to represent any DC terms, we will use the capital letters to represent current I capital I. And to represent voltage, we will use the capital letter V for DC parameters. And similarly, to represent the AC signals or AC quantities, we will use the small letters I comma V. Okay, in this way, we will represent the AC parameters as well as DC parameters. So, if we are representing the current and voltage in terms of AC values, we will get it as small i as well as small v. Okay. So, now I am replacing my third and fourth equations with v1 is equal to h11 So from this third and fourth equations, we can able to find all the H parameter values here. So how we will get this particular uh, H parameters, we will see now. So here to get the H11 value. So H11 is nothing but here V1 by I1 when V2 equal to short circuit that is nothing but when you are applying v2 equal to 0 you will get the first h parameter that is v1 by i1 so this h11 we can call it as input impedance and we can write it as hi why i am calling it as input impedance means both the parameters v1 and i1 or belongs to the port 1 parameters so that's why i am calling it as input impedance or short circuited input impedance and that we can approximate it here it as hi and similarly h12 is nothing but v1 by v2 when i1 is 0 that is nothing but here we cannot say this particular parameter is belongs to the input parameter or output parameter. Why? Because in this particular parameter we are having both the input quantity as well as output quantity. And here we got V1 by V2. Actually V2 by V1 that is nothing but output voltage by input voltage will give the voltage gain. But here we are getting the reverse so that's why it is called as reverse voltage gain or open circuited reverse voltage gain why because here i1 equal to 0 when you are opening the input terminals in that case we can able to find the reverse voltage gain of transistor So we can write it as HR. Okay, this is the reverse voltage gain of in terms of 
h parameters why we are writing is our hr means the first letter or here first letter i so that's why it is h i and similarly if we calculate the h21 parameter so to calculate h21 parameter that is the we will get it as i2 by i1 when v2 equal to 0 so in this case also we cannot say this particular parameter is belongs to the input parameter or output parameter so that's why we can call it as forward current gain why because here we are having i2 by i1 that is port 2 current by port 1 current that is nothing but output port current by input port current so forward current gain so we can represent here it as hf forward current gain and the last parameter is h22 h22 is nothing but i2 by v2 so generally v by i is nothing but the resistance but here we have i by v that indicates the admittance that is 1 by resistance will indicate the admittance and this parameter we can able to find once we open the input terminals of the two port network. So this one we can call it as output admittance and we can write it as HO. So we got the four parameters those are HI hr ho i hf i ho so these are nothing but you are h11 h12 h21 h22 parameters so generally in the h parameters the first subscript will indicate the parameter which type of parameter here it is that may be the voltage gain or current gain or input impedance or admittance so the first subscript will indicate the parameter and the second subscript will indicate the configuration here okay the second subscript will indicate the configuration that is nothing but here this h11 or hi if i wanted to represent in common emitter configuration for example if i wanted to represent in common emitter common collector as well as common base configuration so i can represent hi as hie and hr as hre hf as hfe ho as hoe in the case of common emitter configuration and similarly if we want to represent in common base configuration this hi will becomes hic here it is hrc hfc and hos and similarly to represent in the common base configuration it is hib hrb hfb and ho see if you take any configuration we will get the parameters are same but the notations will be different depends upon which configuration we are going to choose here for the amplification so depends upon the configuration the notations will be changed in the case of h parameters here so how we can represent this hybrid equivalent circuit from the equations of hybrid model so here uh, we can write v1 equal to h11 i1 plus h12 v0 and similarly i2 equal to h21 i1 plus h22 v0 okay these are the equations the two dependent equations in terms of 
independent independent parameters so after finding the h parameter values we can replace our third and fourth equations with this find six equations after finding all h parameters we can replace the third and fourth equations with the five and six equations so once again i'll tell so if you if we put i1 equal to 0 as well as v2 equal to 0 so that we can able to find the all the h parameters if you substitute input terminals are open circuited and output terminals are short circuited that is nothing but input current is zero as well as output voltage is zero if voltage is zero means we have to short the terminals if the current is zero means we have to open that particular terminals so uh, while finding the input impedance we have to short the output terminals and while finding the reverse voltage gain we have to open the input terminals and similarly to find the forward current gain we have to short the output terminals and to find the output impedance we have to open the input terminals so according to that we will get this 5 and 6 equations so by using this 5 and 6 equations we can able to construct the hybrid equivalent circuit for any kind of npn or pnp transistors so to represent that particular circuit i am taking my two ports first first of all i am considering my ground level okay this left side i am taking it as my input port and the right side i am considering my output port so if we observe these two equations v1 is the input parameter equation i2 is the output parameter equation so first of all if we take the fifth equation that is the input equation so here from this h11 we will get it as v1 by i1 that is nothing but resistance or input impedance so resistance as well as input impedance we can represent here with the resistor that is nothing but i am replacing this line with the resistance here that is h i input impedance and along with this here we have the input voltage v1 as well as the input current i1 will flows in the input port and similarly the output voltage v2 i the output current i2 will flows in the port 2 here so here we represented the h11 parameter next we need to represent the h12 so here h12 is nothing but v1 by v0 or v1 by v2 in our terms we can say here it as 2 okay v1 by v2 output port parameters we are taking with the subscript 2 here so v1 by v2 is nothing but reverse voltage gain here but he, in order to represent the voltage sorry voltage gain we don't have any symbols here so to represent this voltage gain i am converting this voltage gain in the form of voltage source so to make it as voltage source i am multiplying it with v2 so once i am multiplying it with v2 means these two will get cancelled so that it can acts like a voltage source v1 but so this particular thing is nothing but h12 and this is v2 so h12 v2 so we can replace this voltage gain with the voltage source by multiplying with v2 so this is the voltage source with plus minus and this value is h12 into v h12 into v and so this is from the fifth equation so while coming to the output port side we are having the h21 parameter that is i2 by i1 so again i2 by i1 is the current gain here again to represent the current gain also we don't have any symbols so 
to represent this current gain and converting this current gain in the form of current source by multiplying with I1. So once this I1 and I1 will get cancelled means we will get it as the current source as I2. So this one I am taking here it as my H21 and into this is I. So I am replacing or to represent this H21 I am taking the current source I am taking the current source multiplying with input current I and file to represent the H22. H22 is nothing but the I2 by V2. Generally if we have V2 by I2 means we can directly represent with the resistance but here I2 by V2 that is nothing but here it is the admittance parameters. So this is nothing but we can represent here it as R22 1 by R22. So I am writing here it as the parallel resistor that is nothing but H22. So this is the hybrid equivalent circuit by using hybrid parameters. Okay, this is the representation of any two port network in terms of hybrid parameter model by using all hybrid parameters. So this one is applicable for all the configurations. So in order to make it as any configuration hybrid model, you have to change all the notations, all the input parameters as well as output parameters and also all the H parameters we have to replace with that corresponding configuration parameters. Okay, so these are the two equations we have derived from the hybrid model. Okay, from that we have derived the all the H parameters. So H11 is nothing but the input voltage by input current. So this is the input resistance when the output is short circuited and we can measure in terms of ohms this way. And next parameter is the H12 that is the fraction of output voltage at input with input open circuited. So this parameter is the ratio of similar quantities. So we don't have any units for this. It is unitless. And similarly H21 is the forward transfer ratio or current ratio with output short circuited. So here also both the parameters are same quantities. So that's why it is unitless. And similarly H22 is the output admittance we will measure in terms of moles. Okay. So when the output is short circuited we can able to find the input impedance as well as the reverse voltage gain. And similarly when you open circuited the input terminals we can able to find the reverse voltage gain as well as output admittance here. So this is a procedure to represent the transistor in terms of hybrid model. So these are the circuits which indicates the transistor represented in the common base and the common collector as well as common emitter configurations. So in this case all the transistors are all the transistors are replaced with the all these transistors are replaced with its equivalent hybrid models. So this is in the case of common emitter configuration. So in the common emitter configuration input voltage is VBE, input current is IB and similarly output voltage is VCE, output current is IC. So that's why we have replaced all the input output parameters with the common emitter parameters and similarly the H parameters also, the subscript E will be added to your H parameters for HI in the place of HI we have written the HI in the place of HR we have to take HRE and in the place of HF we have to take HFE and in the place of HO we have to take it as 1 by HO. So these are the common emitter configured hybrid equations and this is a hybrid equivalent circuit and this is the common emitter configuration transistor and similarly if we take the common collector configuration input current is the base current input voltage is VBE, output voltage is VCE and the output current is I. 
So in this case also the hybrid parameters are extended with the subscript C, HIC, HRC, HFC and HOC. And these are the H parameter equations for the common collector configuration. And similarly, while coming to the common base configuration, here base terminal is common between the emitter and collector. So that here the input current is the emitter current, input voltage is the base to emitter voltage, and the output voltage is the VCB voltage, and the output current is the collector current. And in this case, the H parameters are extended with the subscript B, HRB, HIB, HFB, and HOB. So, to make any configured hybrid model, we have to indicate all the input parameters and output parameters or belongs to that particular configured parameters and also all the H parameters replaced with the corresponding configuration parameters. So, this is the formulas in the case of common base common emitter as well as common collector configurations and these are the different H parameter values in all the three configurations. So these values are very important while solving the problems. Sometimes in the problems they will not mention the hybrid parameter values. So we have to remember these values then we need to substitute that values if at all not given in the problem. So now we'll see how we can apply this particular hybrid model for the analysis of the transistor here. So that indicates the small signal analysis of a transistor. So generally to do the small signal analysis of a transistor here we have two steps here. The first thing is we have to short all the DC sources as well as the capacitors which are present in the amplifier circuit. That is nothing but short DC sources as well as short all the capacitors in the circuit. And the second step is we need to replace these transistor with the biasing circuits with its equivalent hybrid model. So here I am considering my basic transistor amplifier. Okay, so this is my transistor. For that, I am indicating my input parameters V1 and I1 as well as output parameters are V2 and I2. So for this, I am providing my input signal through the source resistance RS. And similarly, I am observing the amplified output across the load resistance R. And if we observe here, the load resistance R is here, so the direction of the load current, current is in this direction, but the direction of the transistor current is in this direction. So always the load current is equal to minus I2 here. So in this case, this part is as it is. This till this part, it is as it is we are considering here and also this particular part we are considering as it is here. Okay, same as it is we are replacing. And again, this particular transistor we are replacing with its hybrid model. We are replacing with hybrid model. Okay, this is the hybrid equivalent circuit. So the first step is to we have to remove all the DC sources and we have to short all the capacitors and next we need to replace the transistor with its hybrid model then we can able to analyze the circuit. So after doing the small signal analysis of the transistor amplifier we can able to find the current gain, current gain with source resistance into consideration and the input impedance, voltage gain, voltage gain along with the source resistance into configuration and the output admittance and also the power gain. So all these parameters we can able to find in terms of H parameters in all the three configurations. So these are the points or these are the steps in order to 
do the ac analysis of the transistor circuit first thing is we have to draw the actual circuit diagram of the given amplifier circuit that may be in the common emitter or common base or common collector configuration mm -hmm. and next replace the coupling capacitors as well as emitter bypass capacitors by short circuit and next replace the dc sources also with the short circuit that is nothing but vcc supply we need to ground and we have to mark the base collector as well as emitter terminals on the circuit and from the terminals on we have from the terminals we can able to start the equivalent circuit and the next the last thing is we have to replace the transistor by its h parameter mode so here i am considering my basic amplifier circuit with the applied input voltage as well as the load resistor so in order to analyze this particular transistor circuit i am replacing this transistor with the h parameter model so after replacing the transistor with the hybrid model this one is your hybrid equivalent circuit of the transistor so this source resistance as well as the vsc is as it is as well as load resistance is also as it is we are not changing anything over there but just we replace it the transistor with its hybrid equivalent model so next we have to find all the four parameters so those are current gain input impedance voltage gain as well as output admittance so we have to calculate these four parameters for from the analysis of the transistor so here current gain is nothing but the ratio of the output current to the input current here so in the in this case the output current is the load current input current is the i1 current so that's why current gain i am taking here it as il by i1 and but the direction of the il current is in this direction but the direction of the i2 current is in this direction so that's why we can write I L equal to minus I two, so that's why I L equal to minus I two and divided by I V. Okay, so here to find the gain value, we have to find the I two parameter here. So in this analysis part, to find any output parameters, apply K V L to the output side or output port, and to find any input parameter, apply K V L to input side or input port. So here I require the I two value. So I two is present in the output side. So that's why I'm applying K V L to the output loop. So if I applying K V L to the output loop, I will get it as I two equal to H F I one plus H naught V two. So this is the I two equation. So here V two value. How we can calculate V two value? V two value is the drop across the load resistance. That is nothing but I L into Z L, and again I L is nothing but what minus I two into Z L. So V two is nothing but minus I two into Z L. Okay. So in the case of I two equation, if we substitute this V two, we will get it as I two equal to H F I one minus I two Z L into H naught. So if we take this I two term into the left side, we will get it as I two plus I two Z L H naught equal to H F I one. So if we take I two common, we will get this particular equation, and after simplification, we will get it as minus H F by one plus Z L H naught. So this is the current gain in the case of amplifier circuit in terms of H parameters. So this parameter is applicable for all the configurations. So the current gain A I is equal to minus H F by one plus J L H naught. So if you take any configuration here, means you will get it as that subscript will add. Common emitter means H F E H O E, common base means H F B H O B, etc. And next parameter we need to find is input impedance. So generally, how we can calculate the input impedance? Once you are looking from the input terminals of your transistor, how much resistance is present in the input port of the transistor? 
will indicate the input impedance so if you looking into the input terminals 1 and 1 dash you will get it as input resistance or input impedance equal to v1 by i1 i have already mentioned to find any input parameter we have to apply kvl to the input side so here not for the total why because for the transistor only we are calculating so apply kvl to here we will get it as v1 is equal to h1 i1 as well as hr v2 and so here zi equal to hi i1 plus hr v2 by i1 so after simplification we will get this so here we know v2 equal to minus i2 into zi so from the ai that is equal to minus i2 by i1 so from this we can write minus i2 is equal to ai into i1 so this ai into a1 i am replaced with the i2 here so you will get it as i1 a1 into z so here z equal to hi plus hr ai i1 z by i1 so after simplification we will get this again we have the ai formula and if you substitute the ai formula here we will get this particular equation and after simplification we will get equation so here we are replacing this 1 by zl with output admittance y so after replacing and after simplification we will get the input impedance z equal to hi minus hf hr by yl plus h0 and next parameter is the voltage gain or voltage amplification factor so that is the ratio of output voltage to the input voltage so in this case output voltage is v2 and the input voltage is v1 so here we know v2 value is il into z and il is nothing but minus i2 into z and i2 is nothing but a1 into i1 into z so in the place of v2 we are writing here it as a1 i1 z and substitute this one in the av equation so if you substitute that one we will get it as a i z l by z i so this is the voltage gain of the amplifier and next one is output admittance so in order to calculate the output admittance the two the two things we need to take into consideration that is we have to make supply voltage as zero and as well as we have to make the load resistance as infinity while finding the admittance that is i2 by v2 okay so to find the admittance first of all i am considering the i2 equation this one we have already derived and i am dividing it with v2 why because we require i2 by v2 so i2 by v2 equal to hf i1 by v2 plus h0 so here with v2 equal to 0 when you apply the kvl to the input side or input loop we will get rs i1 plus h1 i1 drop across the h1 plus hr v2 is equal to 0 and if we take i1 common here we will get this particular equation so from this we can able to find i1 by v2 value this is i1 by v2 value minus hr by rs plus h so here we can find i2 by v2 value as hf i1 by v2 value if we substitute it minus hr by rs plus hi plus h0 so after simplification we will get it as admittance is equal to h0 minus hf hr divided by rs plus h so this is the output admittance of the any amplifier so in order to find the or in order to do the analysis of any amplifier first of all we have to short the all the dc sources as well as capacitors which are present in the circuit and next we need to re replace the transistor with its hybrid equivalent model then to find any output parameter we need to apply the kvl to the output loop and to find any input parameter we need to apply the kvl to the input loop for the simplicity so after applying that kvls if we simplify that we can able to find all the amplifier parameters those are current gain voltage gain input impedance as well as the output admittance 
So these all parameters of the amplifiers in terms of H parameters we derive here. So these all the four parameters are applicable for all the three configurations that is common base, common emitter as well as common collector configurations. So these uh, particular configurations or analysis of amplifier is utilizing for solving the problems using H parameter mode. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.